Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to yet another of my running sessions, in fact the first of this year actually, the first of 2018. Today's running session is going to be all about black locomotives, so I thought I'd do a bit of an introduction on black locomotives. Uh, it was very, very common, to be honest, to see black locomotives on British railways anyway. And certainly by the end of steam in the sort of 1960s, most locomotives were either in BR black or green. Because, frankly, it was just a very, very easy livery to maintain. Obviously, if a black locomotive gets dirty, it still looks black. Whereas if, a, I don't know, a light blue locomotive, BR blue, for example, gets dirty, it looks very, very strange. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the reason why most of the locomotives in Britain were painted into black and of course it doesn't weather too badly either I think uh, some of the other liveries that they experimented with certainly did um, weather pretty badly I think BR Blue was one of them as well actually funnily enough um, in model form black locomotives are also very numerous because they're actually the cheapest to produce a lot of them aren't very sophisticated, a lot of them don't have lining on them. Some of them do, of course, but it's still uh, a little bit easier to produce, I imagine, than uh, sort of the LNER greens with all of the lining and intricate paintwork and uh, such. So I think that's probably why we see so many of them in model form. And of course, there's a lot of variation in black liveries. I mean, there's LMS black, Southern black, BR black, LNER black. I mean, you name it, there's, there's so, so many. So I've chosen six of my favourite black locomotives today. And of course, I've got more than six favourites. I've got about 300. Um, and it's not a definitive collection of black locomotives that I'm going to show today, but hopefully it's six of the more interesting ones. And at the end, I'm going to show you some more contenders as well. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. Let's get going with a few engines that I've never shown before. In fact, three from today are ones that have never appeared before on this channel. So I really hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, I've enjoyed it already because I've been putting all the rolling stock out for the first time this year and getting all the engines testing. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be a good time. So let's get started. Here we go, folks. So I'm going to kick off today with a tank engine and this particular one is in LMS black and of course it's the Fairburn 4MT tank, never shown this one before. A few people have noticed, well they've commented, that I'm showing a lot of tank engines at the moment. And yeah, I think that's true, I try to, I'm trying to show a variety of course, but uh, I've spent several years looking at, you know, hundreds of tender locomotives. So, you know, at some point I've got to switch to, ten, uh, to tank engines, I'm sorry, and uh, start showing those a little bit as well. So, yeah, a few tank engines for you today. I think I've got uh, two to show today. So, yeah, it's still mostly tender engines anyway. So, I'm going to stop rambling and show you what she's pulling. She's got some uh, wagons, open wagons. I think they're all empty, so it shouldn't be too heavy for her. Uh, so, let's open this point. There we go, that's open. And uh, let's give her a little run. And uh, this is a brand new engine, actually. I bought it over Christmas. Uh, from uh, Hattons, I think it was. Was it Hattons? I think so. And it was fairly expensive, but uh, I'm quite happy with it. It's it's very it's a very nice model, so I'll need to review her at some point. I'm just easing her up on the controller, and she's moving. Of course, I don't really have much of an idea of how much this one can pull, but uh, I bet she'd do quite a good job. I might have to test her uh, her strength at some point. There we go, well that was quite a good start wasn't it, nothing derailed. Ok, here's a little bit of history then on the Fairburns. So the Fairburn 264s were a tank engine designed for the LMS and introduced in 1945. A total of 277 were produced to the design of Charles E. Fairburn. The design retained many features of the slightly older Stania 264 design, which in turn was based on Fowler's original 264 design. The class was only part of the LMS for three short years though, because in 1948 nationalisation occurred and they became part of the BR fleet of course. They continued to be produced until 1951 and the class performed mixed traffic duties until their withdrawal which took place between 1961 and 1967. Only two were preserved and unfortunately the rest were scrapped. What do you reckon it is about this loco that just makes her so lovely to watch? Don't know, does anyone else feel like that or is it just me being weird? I suppose it could be. Uh, but there she is anyway, the LMS Fairburn tank. I'm going to leave her there for just a second while I get the other lines filled up and of course she'll be running again shortly. 
And here is the next engine, and it's completely different really. This is of course the Southern Schools class, but this one is in a BR livery, and it really is quite a sophisticated livery. I mean, you can see all the lining on there. It, uh, it really is a lovely livery. And if you look on the top, you can also see that this has a white cab, sort of roof, and I believe that indicated that she would have been pulling the Royal train. So uh, she hasn't got Royal coaches though, she's just got some Pullman coaches and also my Excalibur Express coaches. And uh, those are all sort of named after knights and things from the King Arthur tale. You can see that one is the Red Knight I believe. Uh, so quite a nice little train, five coaches in total. So that hopefully demonstrates how powerful the schools class were. Uh, I forget the name of this one actually. It's Brighton, there we go. The nameplates are really dodgy on that one. Anyway, let's open up the points and get her started. Hopefully nothing will derail. Hopefully. Look at that. Full house. Fantastic. I suppose technically she is wrong roading at the moment, but as soon as she gets around to the front, I'm going to switch some express points and get her onto the middle line, and then she'll be facing the right way. But there she goes, this is a Hornby one. It is cast metal, I believe, the body, but uh, mine was in pretty bad condition when I got it, brand new. Uh, so I've never really liked it, you know, there's damage to the uh, valve gear, detail is broken. Really not a great quality model, but uh, she certainly looks the part, and she runs pr quite nicely too, as you can tell. Well, here she comes anyway, so I better switch those points now, <laughs> rather than just talk about it. Okay, let's see how this goes. The engine's okay. The Pullmans are okay. Last few coaches then. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a full house again. Hey, there we go, that was very good. Okay, a little bit of history then on the schools class this time. The schools class were introduced to the Southern Railway in 1930 and were one of the most successful designs of Richard Maunsell. They earned the title of the most powerful 440 locomotives in Europe at the time and they were classified by the BR as a 5P, which is, as I've always said, very, very high for a 440. The schools were quite unusual because 440s were becoming quite old fashioned towards the end of the 1920s and yet these still replaced the older L1 440s and were even a massive improvement over some 460 designs which could have been considerably larger than them. In total 40 were produced over 5 years and luckily 3 still remain in preservation. Well, she certainly gives a good performance, doesn't she? And I tried to get her going at a bit of a sort of express passenger speed for you. Just stop her there next to the uh, Fairburn 4MT. So that's the school's class anyway, if you could just see her there behind the wagons. Quite a nice model. I'm sure I just got unlucky with this particular one. <laughs> but she works, and that's the main thing, I suppose. Anyway, one more line still to go for this first half of the video, so let me show you which engine is next. And the next engine is yet another one that I've never shown before. This is in LNER Black and it's the DJ Models J94. And this is the first DJ model, David Jones model, that I've ever bought. And it's quite nice, you know, it's not bad. It doesn't really bring a lot to the table, I don't think, in terms of detail and performance. Uh, it is fairly basic, really, for what it is. But it was cheap, and the build quality seems to be pretty darn good, actually, so it's not bad. Anyway, that is LNER Black, and you could tell that, of course, because of the font, and also the fact that it says LNER, of course. And she's got a good strain. Um, it's a little sort of Smith's Crisp Snacks and Nuts train with an LNER brake van on the end, and she is going to be pulling from the front, sort of uh, coal bunker first today. So let me open up these points, and I'll get her started for you. The name J94 originated from the LNER when the class was purchased from the War Department following the end of the Second World War. Before this, the class were known as the Hunslet Austerity 060Ts, and they were first introduced several years earlier in 1943 by the Hunslet Engine Company, and became the standard British shunting locomotive during World War II. 
The initial choice had actually been the LMS Ginty, but the Hunslet design was eventually chosen because of its simplicity. In total, 75 G94s worked for the LNER, and two of them have been preserved. So there you have it, the DJ model. Oh goodness, it stopped on the point. Yeah, it's not, it's not a fantastic runner to be honest. It's alright. There we go. So that's it, that's the J94 just coming into shot. I don't know why she's playing up now. Okay, I'll stop her right there next to the others. So that's uh, very lovely looking of course. And I do really like the LNER black. I know it's not a lot different to the other kind of black you can get these in. But uh, it's just something about the LNER font that I've always liked. So uh, there she is. And uh, I'm going to get everything running now. So let's get her started. The schools class of course. And I think my favourite so far, the Fairburn tank. There she goes. Okay, let's have a running session with everything then. Apparently the Excalibur Express did run with Pullman coaches at some point, so that's a little reference to that if anyone was wondering. I don't know how true that is, but I thought it sounded like a good idea whether it was true or not, so I did it. And it does look nice, so that's one to remember, a combination to remember anyway. And here she comes, my favourite so far. Possibly the favourite of the day. The Fairburn Tank. Yeah, she is lovely. Very elegant. I don't know what it is about that one, I tell you, but... I'm in love with her already. <laughs> and of course I can get away with pulling coaches or wagons with her, so... It's the best of both worlds, because she's mixed traffic, of course. And there's our express locomotive for today. And those Pullmans are the Queen of Scots Pullmans, I believe. Which came from the, probably the train set of the same name, actually. Though, don't quote me on that. <laughs> I didn't buy them in a train set. I just bought them on their own um, from somebody who was selling them. But I assume that's where they came from. Or a train pack, I suppose it could have been. <laughs> Almost cut out again. Trying a new angle right now. Now that they're lit from behind as well as in front, you can do this kind of thing. I think I want to I want to review that Fairburn sooner rather than later as well because she's lovely, really, really lovely. I can't remember how much she was, quite close to a hundred pounds, I think. But um, to be honest with you, I'm starting to be persuaded that it was worth every penny. I know, shock horror. <laughs> That's not like me at all, is it? <laughs> okay, I think it's time to take these off then. Off camera, I'm going to pop them all back into their various sidings and things. And I'll be right back in just seconds for you, it will be, uh, to show you the second half of the video. So, more black locomotives coming up soon. Um, a little bit more variety to come still. Okay, let's go. Alright, so the first three engines are all back where they belong in their various sidings and things and now it's time to move on to the second half, the second lot of locomotives and we're going back to BR Black this time uh, with this, which is the 3000 class, the Great Western 3000 class, it's an ROD technically 
and she's going to be pulling some Great Western coaches. She's got five of those. Now, this is another brand new engine that I've never shown on the channel before, but I think she's got a bit of a problem. Um, I ordered a brand new from Hattons, and she was running in just fine the other day. Uh, but when I came to set her up for this running session, she was doing that thing where she was running really slowly, and you saw a little puff of smoke come out. Now, I've had other engines that do that, and I don't know really why they do it. I first thought that maybe there was some oil or something on the commutator, or equally a uh, sort of carbon buildup maybe on the commutator, but I've actually gone to town on one of them, it was my Backman Patriot, and completely stripped down the motor and cleaned it, and uh, the problem is still there. So I don't know whether it could be a faulty coil or something like that on the armature, I'm not too sure. So we're going to have to just touch wood today and uh, hope that she gets going okay. Once they're warmed up, they seem to be fine, so let's hope that that's true today. Anyway, let's open this point that one just there and let's give her a little bit of juice and hopefully she'll have the uh, the power to get out of these sidings and get herself warmed up she has got to reverse so uh, that's going to be fun isn't it to say the least okay here she goes let's try and move the camera so yeah i'm not sure yet whether i'm going to send her back or not i think i'll decide today Whoa, there you go. Yeah, you can see what I mean. Jumping into life there. But you can't really attribute that to the engine when it's in a siding like this. Whoa. There she goes. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying that you've got to deal with this sort of thing with brand new models, but such is life, I suppose. Well, such is life in the model railway business anyway. There we go. Right, let's get her going forwards then, or in fact we've got to get her onto the inside line, so let's uh, let's see here. Okay, express points I think it is, let's take her forwards. There we go, just there will be fine. I'll throw her into reverse, open up the points, like that, and start her going again. I'm hoping she's going to improve as she goes. I mean, it just looks like she's doing a nice slow crawl, but she's actually on close to half power at the moment. And if I increase it very slightly, she just sort of kicks into a higher speed. So, yeah, I don't know what does it. It must be a, some sort of motor fault. But, uh, yeah, oh well. Right, let's open up these points then. That one and that one. And that should put her exactly where we want her, on the very inside line. <laughs> yeah, it's not right, is it? But she's okay. I mean, she has got five coaches, I suppose, which probably doesn't make things a lot easier. So there you go. All five coaches there, moving quite nicely. And let's shut the points. And here's a little bit of history then on the 3000 class slash RODs. So the 3000 class consisted of 80 ROD locomotives purchased by the GWR in 1925. But incidentally, 1925 wasn't the first time that these RODs had run for the Great Western, actually. The Great Western hired them from time to time in the past, but I think this was the first time they actually purchased them. Outside of Britain, the ROD was considered the standard heavy freight locomotive in Europe for the First World War. It was an adaptation of John G. Robinson's 8K locomotive, and that was a design from 1911. After the war, many of the locomotives were surplus to requirements, and therefore various railway companies were able to purchase them and continue to use them, just like the Great Western did. 46 RODs survived into BR ownership, British Railways, but sadly all were eventually scrapped and none entered preservation. So there you have it then, let me slow her down to a stop. That is the Great Western ROD for the first time on the channel. And as I say, now that she's warmed up, she's running as she should be, pretty much. Um, let me give her a little bit more juice just to test that theory. Yep, that's pretty much as it should be, I think you'd agree. So it's a strange issue, I don't know what it, I don't know what does it. I thought to start with it could be something clogging up the, uh, the commutator. 
but uh, I don't think it is now, now that I've done a bit of digging. But I suppose every engine's different, so it could be, not sure. Anyway, I'm going to leave her there for just a second while we look at the final two engines of the day. So uh, let's leave her and uh, go do that right now. And I think this particular model will bring back quite a few memories for some people out there. And it really is one of the most important models ever produced. In fact, this is probably the model that started it all in its original form. Uh, Rovex, uh, which is also known as Triang, first produced this in the 1950s. And it really was the sort of the very first plastic ready to run model. Uh, released really in the UK and it basically paved the way to what we have today plastic models double O gauge at an affordable price it, it really did start it all this is a slightly later version I think this one would have been produced in the late 60s maybe even the 70s but I believe it is the same tooling as that uh, original Rovex one so anyway she's got some LMS coaches uh, although there might be BR coaches actually I'm not 100% sure they're crimson coaches anyway so let's open these two points she's over on the turntable of course so I've got to open them both and uh, here she goes, let's give her a little bit of juice, the Triang Princess. I don't think I said it was a princess. It is, it's a princess. There she goes. Old, but still runs beautifully. And really quiet today as well. Well done, princess. <laughs> and she's going to be going on to the middle line, so I better open these because she's coming. She's on her way. There she is. And I'll never stop loving these. These really are lovely, classic models. They really are. You've got to get yourself one if you can, because they're not all that expensive these days on eBay. Introduced in 1933, the Princesses were the first four-cylinder Pacifics to be designed by William Stanier. The first two engines, Princess Royal and Princess Elizabeth, were both apparently disappointing, and because of this, Stanier fitted them with new boilers containing 32 superheater tubes rather than just 16 as they originally had. And this instantly rectified the issues, and the rest of the class were then produced successfully. And of course they went on to become icons, really, of the LMS Railway. Of 13 produced in total, only two survive in preservation. Alright then, let's bring her to a stop just next to the ROD. In fact, no, I'll bring her back a touch so I can get a close-up on her for you. There we go, that's a bit better just there. So there she is, that is the Princess Royal. Although her name isn't Princess Royal, this one is Princess Victoria, of course. A very lovely Triang classic, that one. Okay, so now we're at the last loco of the day. Time to show it to you then, and it's another Southern one. And here she is, it's the S15, like I said, from the Southern Railway. And it's funny, you know, we say, oh, I love this livery, but really, a lot of them are exactly the same. The only thing that lets you tell them apart is often just the font and colour of the text. But it is amazing how much character, you know, that uh, green Southern lettering can give an engine, um, even though it is only a, a tiny part of the overall livery. But uh, anyway, she's got some tankards, as you can see. You, well, you can't see all of them, actually. A lot of them are inside the shed. But uh, it's a fair little rake of tankers, so uh, let's get her started and uh, see how she runs, shall we? So, similar in design to Yuri's N15, the S15 was very slightly smaller, introduced in 1920, and was intended for night goods trains. Following 1923, these locomotives became part of the Southern Railway Fleet, as you can see by this model, where additional members of the class were produced by Richard Maunsell in 1927. And I think this particular model is based on one of those, but of course I don't think the design was changed very much by Maunsell, as far as I know. After their modifications, the S15s were said to be excellent performers and perfectly ideal for both passenger and goods services. Of 45 produced, a healthy 7 have been preserved, and this example, number 827, was built in 1927, withdrawn in 1964, and cut up during the same year, having survived for almost 40 years. Okay, there she goes then, that's the lovely S15. Time to get the other two locos up and running then, and we'll have a little running session, forwards if you will, Princess. And then I'll show you some honourable mentions at the end. Oh, they're all going the wrong way, how did that happen? 
Seriously, how did that happen? Anyway, go on, get your speed back up. Okay, enjoy the running session then. Let's hope everything goes okay. Blimey. She's lively, isn't she? Crikey. She's only about half speed. Oh well, I guess that's the uh, the LMS for you, isn't it? Always at high speeds. But the S15 is being much more sensible. And I do like the way those tankers look. Those two green ones were actually a present from somebody I did some jobs for. So you've seen all of them by the way, so uh, do let me know in the poll which one was your favourite. I can only use I think five answers in the poll, so two of them are going to have to be grouped together. But uh, yeah, there's not really much I could do about that. I do like that rod though. Rod. I'm going to call it a rod. <laughs> R-O-D though is of course the proper name. Or the 3000 class, whichever you prefer. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Time then to show some honourable mentions, uh, sort of black liveried locos, which I really like, but of course didn't have time to show. So uh, here's just a few of those now. So here they are then, just five particularly nice black locomotives that I've picked out. The first one over here on the left is a D16 from the LNER, so it's in LNER black, and I really particularly like the, uh, the red lining on that, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the second one in is a Southern locomotive, this is the Drummond 700 class, and the thing that's special about this is of course that it's got the green lining on it, as you can see. Uh, really, really superb that one is. Uh, then we've got the Web Coal Tank, that's this one here, and this one would be LNWR black, and very, very nice it is too. I particularly like the sort of white lining on the, uh, on the handrails and such around the tanks, very, very nice. And then I couldn't forget one of the massive coronation class, of course, in the LMS Black. I particularly like this one because of the lining, of course, as you can see. Really, really lovely, that. And finally, yet another BR Black. This one is the Backman D11. And she's really, really beautiful, just in general, uh, because of the shape of the locomotive and such, uh, for me. And, of course, the lining is very lovely on that. So, so there we go. And uh, that will just about do it for my day with Black Locomotives. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to let me know which was your favourite. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you'd like to see some more. But for now folks, thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers everybody.